the member for Melton. Thank you, Acting Speaker. And I rise to contribute to the Justice Legislation Amendment Fines Reform and Other Matters Bill 2022. And it's always a pleasure to follow my great colleague, the member for Bunnyong. Uh, it's fantastic to work with her on a whole range of issues that we have common in it throughout our electorate. So, and another great contribution, of course. Of course, the purpose of this bill is to implement the five recommendations uh, of the government's response to the final report of the Fines Reform Advisory Board, and we'll call it FRAB for now, and uh, make some important changes to improve the fine system and, of course, make minor and technical changes to uh, clarify a range of matters. And some of those important changes um, will create a more efficient and robust fine system, continue to improve fairness and for fines recipients, particularly those suffering from hardships, improve transparency for the fine system, and create clarity on roles and responsibilities. So the Fines Reform Advisory Board was established in mid-2019 by the then Attorney-General, the member for Altona, and I would like to thank the member for Altona, like many of my other colleagues have already done for starting these important reforms. And of course, the member for Altona often speaks eloquently about the gift of government and about not wasting a moment of your time with the privilege that you were given from the people of Victoria. And it's certainly, uh, it's these reforms like, uh, that uh, might not get the headlines in the news or on Twitter, um, but they can often make a tangible difference for many, many Victorians. So fines reform advisory, the Fines Reform Advisory Board was comprised of Julie Fay uh, and the Honourable David Harper, AMQC. And this board was asked by the government to provide independent advice on how the fine system was working since reforms were introduced by the Fines Reform Act, reform Act 2014 that took effect at the start of 2018. The board um, made 24 recommendations um, with the government supporting seven recommendations in full, six rec recommendations in principle, and decided to further consider the remaining 11 recommendations. So changes in this bill will add to the eight FRAB recommendations which have already been partially or fully implemented. The bill implements recommendation one, and that goes to that the section one of the Fines Reform Act should be amended to provide a clear statement of the purpose of the Fines Reform. Uh, this will create a stronger common understanding of the objectives of fines reform among stakeholders. And the proposed changes will amend the Fines Reform Act to identify the Act, the four key objectives of fines reform. And they are centralised collection and enforcement, stronger enforcement mechanisms, better support for the vulnerable and the disadvantaged, and enhanced review and oversight processes. Um, so as the fine system operates across a number of acts, uh, including the Infringements Act, the Road Safety Act and Fines Reform Act, the, this inclusion will help to provide a clear picture of the policy aims of our infringement system. This also uh, addresses challenges in enforcement agencies to understand the common purpose of fines in Victoria. Uh, and the, the bill implements recommendation five that the Infringements Act 2006 should be amended to require the publication of the Attorney General's annual reports on the infringement system. And of course, transparency is improved uh, by creating a legislative obligation for the Attorney General uh, to publish an annual report on the infringements system. And while those annual reports are currently prepared, um, there's no legislative requirement for the government to prepare or publish um, those reports. The annual report will also now include information on the Director of Fines Victoria's internal review oversight function. Uh, the inclusion on the Director's internal review oversight function goes further than the terms of the FRAB recommendation. And the change will make reporting requirements more efficient and is of clear relevance to fines system stakeholders and the broader Victorian community. So um, what's particularly relevant following a recent investigation by the Victorian Ombudsman into the internal review practices of some municipal councils, recommendation 12 seeks a more accessible time served scheme. And the time served scheme allows prisoners to have fines to be expiated to by serving time in prison concurrently or cumulatively with other offences. The rationale for the scheme is to support prisoners, and I'm I dare say everyone here um, would like to support prisoners in a rehabilitation and reintegration process into the, into the community. In effect, they are released with a clean slate. And this recognises that many prisoners face significant disadvantage. Uh, and certainly coming out of prison 
would be very difficult to try and um, reintegrate back into the community if people are not prepared to give you a go and having a clean state slate certainly puts them on that right path. In 2014, the Sentencing Advisory Council noted that prisoners who had debt were more likely to return to prison compared to those without debt. And I believe that figure is around about 50% that come out with debt generally return to prison because of that. that's one of the reasons why they do end up going back and that is that they are unable to deal with that issue of having that, that debt. So in 2021, the Victorian government made this scheme more accessible by introducing an administrative process to apply for the time served scheme, and that was recommendation 13. Uh, implementing recommendation 12 will improve existing, uh, the existing scheme to support prisoners to reintegrate into the community without fines debts, and that's what we've just spoken about, and that's what other um, members in this chamber have spoken about previously. And these changes will ensure prisoners with unpaid court fines are treated in the same way as prisoners with unpaid infringement fines and remove the current requirement for prisoners to serve time in lieu of payment of their unpaid fine related fees and costs. So I suppose in one way it's a great incentive for prisoners to um, be released from prison, not early, but not have their term uh, extended. So recommendation 12 also calls for the time served scheme to recognise time spent on remand and even where a prisoner um, was not sentenced to a term of imprisonment. So the bill creates certainty that legislative change is made in 2021, <coughs> excuse me, to implement recommendation 13 applies also to remandees. Recommend recommendation 18 of the report recommended additional time to obtain evidence for enforcement review applications on the grounds of special or exceptional circumstances. And we know that sometimes people have special and exceptional circumstances when they are fined, such their fine should be withdrawn or cancelled. And a person can apply for a review with Fines Victoria if they meet certain criteria. So someone that could be eligible to apply for a special circumstance exemption includes people that you know, either had a mental or intellectual disability um, or a disorder or a disease or illness, um, including anxiety and depression, whether they had some sort of serious addiction to drugs, alcohol or volatile substance. And this might include things such as marijuana, alcohol, as well as drugs such as you know, heroin, ice speed or ecstasy. Of course, someone that may be a victim of family violence and, of course, um, someone that may be homeless. So um, I'm particularly happy to see this recommendation included in this bill, and especially as we emerge uh, from the pandemic and the economic difficulties for many in our community. Uh, and as um, parts of our community deal with the cost of living increases, increasing, um, homelessness will be a concern, as is the mental health condition of many vulnerable people um, in our communities, and, and, and even more so because of the pandemic. So um, changes uh, introduced by the government uh, in 2021 make it easier to prove special circumstances uh, and recommendation 20 concerns powers for toll operators to withdraw tolling infringements and I think the member for Bunningham went to this before and I'll repeat it that tolling companies can request that Victoria Police serve an infringement notice on, the, on a driver or serve a notice on the person nominated as the driver and this follows non-payment of a tolling charge. So tolling companies have launched programs to improve the way it supports vulnerable Victorians and those, um, uh, whereas, and those um, experiencing financial hardship. The government has implemented and funded a range of assistant measures to support people who experience hardship and who have outstanding fines. And that may include improvements to special circumstances tests, the family violence scheme, work and development permit, and payment plans. And this means that people have a number of options to resolve their fines. And in 2021, the government made it easier for people to apply for special circumstances and exemptions, as recommended by the Fines Reform Advisory Board. Um, in the short time that I have left, um, of course, um, the community legal centres and the VLA um, contributed with some submissions uh, to the Fines Reform Advisory Board, and I want to thank, therefore, want to thank them um, for their input and their suggestions of some additions, and I think that's been very fruitful. Um, Acting Speaker, these amendments seek to make our system fairer and certainly easier to work through. 
I want to thank the Attorney General and her staff, and of course, once again, the previous AG, the member uh, for Altona, and I commend the bill to the House.